So in this video, we're going to talk about the variational principle. Uh, my eyes are not showing up. Uh, also known as the variational method in quantum mechanics. And so, so what is the variational principle? Why do we? Why might we use it? Well, the whole point of quantum mechanics, what you learn in your quantum mechanics courses, is how to solve the Schrodinger equation. So h psi equals e psi, and I'm using uh, Dirac notation here because it makes makes life easy. Um, and so in general, you know, we know this Hamiltonian, so we've got some potential energy which might be a function of x if we're in one dimension. And we want to figure out this psi and we want to figure out e. Um, and in general, when we solve this equation, there's going to be a bunch of possible states. So a bunch of possible energies, uh, e1, e2, e3, and so on and so on. There's, there's going to be an infinite number. And those correspond to different wave functions, psi1, psi2, psi3, and, and so on. Um, but the, the problem with this is that solving the Schrodinger equation is really hard. Um, in fact, it's almost impossible, uh, or, or it is impossible most of the time, at least to solve it analytically, um, except in stupid simple cases like, you know, V equals zero or V equals a constant, or there's, there's other, other times you can solve it as well. But in general, you can't. And so we resort, how do we, how do we solve this? Well, we resort to approximation methods. So um, perturbation theory is one approximation method, probably the most important one. And num coming in at number two is the variational principle. And so what the variational principle allows us to do is it allows us to find this energy, E1. So that's the big idea. That's what we're trying to do with the variational principle. Um, and you might ask, well, how do we do that? Um, how do we find E1 for a given arbitrary H? Because, you know, H is, H is complicated. It's, uh, you know, in one dimension minus H bar squared over 2M D squared DX squared plus our potential energy. Um, and, you know, it's gross. Like we, uh, it's, it's very difficult to, to solve. So how do we, um, how can we make an approximation to give us E1? Um, and what we do uh, is we give up. Uh, so we give up completely on trying to solve the Schrodinger equation. And what we do is we say, well, let's say I already know uh, the, the wave function. I already know the, let's pretend I know the ground state wave function. I'm going to call that psi guess. So we're just going to pretend for a second that you, you, you have some wave function that you think is a, a reasonable approximation to the ground state wave function. So I don't know, maybe it's a Gaussian, maybe it's a, a sine wave, maybe it's a, an exponential thingamabobber. Um, but say you have some, uh, some reasonable guess as to what the ground state wave function looks like. Then uh, let's, let's go through a little, a little bit of math. Um, we want to find the energy that corresponds to this wave function. So we want to find E guess. Uh, and we can do that from the, we can use the Schrodinger equation to figure, figure out what that is. So we know that H psi is equal to E psi. And in this case, that's our, our guess, let's call it our guess energy or the energy that corresponds to the wave function that we're guessing. Um, and if we want to get rid of this guess on the right hand side, we just need to left multiply everything by psi. So if we if we do that, then we've got psi guess, h psi guess, and then as long as the wave function is normalized, which I'm going to assume that it is, uh, this guy goes away because this on the right hand side is just equal to one. And so let's find this this energy. Uh, well, what is the what is the wave function? Our our guess wave function. Um, well, we can always expand it in terms of our our actual solution. So you know, up above here are psi one, psi two, psi three. We may not know what they are, um, and we don't know what they are right now. We're trying to figure them out. Um, but in general, as long as our solution set is complete, um, and it almost always is, then our psi guess is just going to be some linear combination of the true wave function. So C one times psi one plus C two times psi two plus, you know, C3, Psi3, blah, 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 all, all the way up to infinity. Um, and if we want to find the energy, uh, you can just just expand the, the right-hand side or the, the ket 
uh, or sorry, the bra um, wave function is just going to be C1 conjugate times Psi1 plus C2 conjugate times Psi2 plus blah, 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 blah. All the, all the higher, higher terms. Now, if you hit the the Hamiltonian, if you attack this guess wave function, then we're going to hit each one of our true wave functions, and that's going to produce the, the energy. So H times psi guess uh, is just going to be C1 times E1 psi1 plus C2, E2 psi2 plus blah, 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 so on and so on, all the way up to infinity. Uh, and so we can figure out what our guess energy is uh, by just left multiplying by this guy. Uh, and you'll, you'll notice that because each one of these wave functions, psi1, psi2, is, or, is orthogonal to all the others, um, and you can, you can prove that using the fact that H is Hermitian. Um, but using, using that, uh, all, when, we, when we multiply psi1 by this infinite sum, um, only the psi1 term will matter. Same with psi2 and, and so on. So we'll get that our guess energy is magnitude of c1 squared times e1 plus magnitude of c2 squared times e2 plus blah, 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 blah. Um, but now, uh, now is when the variational principle uh, starts to tell us something. So we're going to do something clever. Um, we're going to say, well, you know, I don't know what E2, E3, I don't know what all these are, but I know that they're all greater than E1. And that's just, you know, by definition, if this is our ground state energy, everything else is higher than that. So we can bound our guess energy. Um, we can say that, well, it's always going to be greater than or equal to um, if we just plop E1 uh, for all of these all of these energies. And we can do that. So um, C1 squared E1 plus C2 squared E2 plus blah, 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 all the other terms. And if we factor out E1, or sorry, this is no longer E1, E2. This is, this, I, just, I just said it, this is E1. Um, and if we factor out E1, then we just add up all of these coefficients, C2 squared plus all the, all the other ones. Um, and these all must add up to one. So these have to be equal to one, and that's just a consequence of our wave function being normalized. Um, the two are two are completely equivalent. So what does that leave us with? Well, that leaves us with something really simple, um, which is that our, our guess energy is less than or equal to E1, or in other words, our ground state energy, the true ground state energy that we do not know um, is less than or equal to this guess energy. Uh, so this is the result of the variational principle. And this is really extraordinary because, you know, I didn't say anything about what psi guess was, um, right? It couldn't have, it could have been anything. It could have been, you know, some random shape, some absolutely disgusting monster. Um, but regardless, this inequality is always going to hold. Um, and the closer our psi guess gets to our true wave function, so the more clever we can be, uh, about choosing psi guess to be approximately equal to the underlying true wave function, uh, the better um, our guess energy will approximate the ground state energy. And so that's the big idea behind the variational, uh, variational principle. So the process of using the variational principle looks something like this. You have a known Hamiltonian, which, you know, I'm just going to hand you a potential V of X. Um, so you have a known Hamiltonian, and you take a guess as to what you think the wave function will be. And then you compute the energy, uh, or you compute a bound on the energy uh, for this wave function, uh, because this is just going to be psi guess h psi guess. Or sorry, this isn't, uh, this isn't a bound. This is, this is exactly equal. Um, this is equal to. Uh, and then your ground state energy, E1, is going to be always less than or equal to, so bounded from above by this guess energy. And so that's, that's sort of the process. You take a potential, you guess at what you think the wave function might be, and then you compute an energy. And a, the cute trick, the sort of the crux of the variational principle is that you can parameterize 
your guess wave function. So maybe your guess wave function is a Gaussian like e to the minus alpha x squared. Um, you have a parameter in this guess wave function. So you can actually minimize this guess energy. Um, so we can minimize this. Uh, so that we have the best possible choice of alpha. Even though this, this wave function might not be our, our actual wave function, we can still choose the best possible alpha to give us the lowest guess energy to get us closest to the true ground state energy. And so I'll go through a couple of examples in the next video uh, to show how this works. But but it's really cool. Um, it's It's very neat. And it's so much simpler than solving the Schrodinger equation. So there you have it.